Hi, I'm Brad. Recently on social media, there's been a lot of discussion about whether PCBR has a future or a present. People are saying the fact since that there's really a bigger rate of return for developers to focus on Quest 2 and the accessibility of the standalone headset platform, it makes more sense to just assume that PCBR is dead. I'm not even going to add my opinion on it because it's silly. Instead, I'm gonna show a solution to probably one of the biggest problems that PCVR has really had and probably will continue to have. The biggest problem with PCVR, even though I love it so much, is it's very difficult to get into and a lot more expensive. Especially in a time where we're having a chip shortage and GPUs are constantly out of stock, no thanks to Bitcoin and scalpers, Asking someone to spend a lot of money on a GPU just so they can run VR is just not very useful these days. But today I'm going to show you something that the community has put together that will actually improve this problem dramatically. Previously on my channel, I showcased a couple of games that added DLSS support by NVIDIA. What DLSS does is basically it renders something at a lower resolution and then uses upscaling, especially with AI, to make it pretty much a lot better and run much more performant. The issue with DLSS, however, is it requires developers to implement into their game, and not only that, it is only really available for 20 series or 30 series NVIDIA GPUs. If you're anything before that, or are an AMD fan, there's nothing for you. Well, at least for DLSS. AMD released sort of a competitor to DLSS pretty recently called FSR or Fidelity FX. Very similar technology, just without the AI part. But the one big difference between AMD solution and NVIDIA solution is one, it allows you to run on any GPU, whether you're AMD or NVIDIA, but the biggest thing is it's open source. Open source basically allows the entire community or any group of gamers to really get together and pretty much reprogram it to work for whatever situation they want it for. And thanks to a person called FG Holder, I hope I am getting that correct, they basically allowed much of the Steam VR or OpenVR library to run AMD FSR without anything except just putting a little file in the directory. What's amazing about this is not only are you able to get insane performance boosts, the compatibility for this mod is actually very wide. Anything that runs an OpenVR runtime on Unity or Unreal will work with this mod. The community has actually been testing this for a lot of different VR games and we're getting insane results already. For me, it's very hard for me to test out how well this will work for lower hardware. I'm using a 3090, but still you see the huge differences in frame times with all the gameplay I'm about to show. And this will trickle down immensely for people that are lowering more potato-ish PCs to say the least. Honestly, this is like a match made in heaven for AMD FSR and VR. AMD FSR has its best quality when it's upscaling to high resolutions. Do you know what has high resolutions? VR. VR is increasingly adding more resolutions for better clarity and also at higher refresh rates to just improve the overall experience and kind of help out motion sickness a little bit. You're probably seeing in all these games that it is improving the frame times dramatically. This is, of course, just using the performance mode on the FSR. When you actually implement this mod, there's a little file that comes with it that allows you to basically tamper the settings or the render scale to depending on really what you want the VR game to do. And not only is this really beneficial for performance, but you can actually make games look better by super sampling them higher than really what the game's render native scale is. It's sort of like the Steam VR super sampling meter, but on more of a software level in terms of the game. Due to the fact this video is mostly focusing on making potato PCs or people with lower hardware want to get better performance in PC VR, I only tested the performance mode, which is about 0 0.50 in the render scale. And for some of these titles, especially VR chat, which is known by the community, it's in fact basically a culture of the community, that VR chat runs very poorly due to the fact that people's culture in VR chat is to make very unoptimized worlds and avatars. So I basically loaded up my favorite world, which is Aquarius by Fins, which is my home world, and you can already see a big difference in frame times. And then I went to a more insane world, which is literally called Framerate Forest. 
this world is just full of trees and a lot of water and just it's insane for VR chat and runs very poorly. But again, you can see huge gains in frame times when I use FSR uh, in just VR chat for this world. It's also beneficial if you use the stream camera or photo camera a lot to record gameplay. Uh, just having any sort of headroom available for your GPU to render that second camera, it will work with FSR. It just will give you better results. So even if you don't have a low tier PC, adding this mod to VR chat would actually be beneficial. However, I'm not sure if the VR chat developers will be so happy about this mod working for their game. I know they have a really weird relationship with uh, modding community in general, but this is not really a modded client as sore. It's more of a modded runtime in open VR. And again, you probably already saw a few of the other games that I showcased in this video. Just really, again, showing much better frame rates for just VR in general. The coolest thing about this mod as well is it actually works in Linux with Proton. If you don't know what Proton is, it's basically what Linux uses to be able to play any Windows game pretty much natively from Linux. It's a compatibility layer for Windows. If you know anything about the Steam Deck, that's basically what the Steam Deck is relying on to play the entire library on Steam. I've been saying for a while that I do believe that there will be a way to get VR running on a Steam Deck, even if it's not the best solution, and I think this mod will be a very big, well, help for that. But the fact that it works the same way as Windows on Linux with Proton is just blows my mind. Now there's a few caveats to this mod. Um, it's more for the future term. Again, this only works for open VR. This does not work, work for open XR, which a lot of the newer titles coming out are actually using an open XR platform rather than the open VR platform, which is basically Steam VR's own proprietary uh, runtime. Of course, this is a temporary solution. Most VR games on Steam still use the open VR platform rather than open XR, so it's really only the new titles. And I imagine due to the fact that, again, this is open source and really just takes someone to really just implement it to open XR as well, it's only a matter of time until we'll be able to see it for the entire library. But again, this is a very big thing. And due to the fact that I think this will make a lot of people run VR much better on their PCs, maybe even some laptops or lower tier just potato PCs in general, it makes things more accessible, at least PC VR wise. And there still is a huge demand for PC VR. Everyone that is buying a Quest 2 is plugging into Steam for some reason. I can speculate on why those reasons are, but it just really proves the fact that, hey, some people are buying Quest 2 and transitioning to PC VR. Adding any sort of mod or runtime that makes PC VR run better is a big thing. And due to the fact that I imagine a lot of people are watching this video are just going to go test right away and hopefully leave comments based on what their PC specs are and how games run on their PC with this mod, this will be the most exciting video I'll ever make. No, but seriously, please uh, post all your results using this mod, no matter what type of PC you have, because it's not even just important for me, but it's important for the community, AMD, and especially Valve to really look at this mod and see how the community is reacting to it. Because again, this stuff can all be native to Steam VR and AMD or really anything in the future, depending on how big it gets. But that's pretty much all I have to say about this. It's a very big thing and I'm really excited that the community is just really showcasing why open source technology is a big thing and while I believe the transition to Linux for Valve in terms of just software and probably hardware in terms of future compute units for VR is a big deal. Closed platforms slow down innovation, open source platforms and really anything open source makes great innovations. Anyway, I hope this video was very useful. I hope you enjoyed it. Like, subscribe and uh, have a great day playing some really interesting VR titles at hopefully better frame rates. Bye.